Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show this week. Okay, we've got a really good one. Really good one. I want to say life changing. I know that it definitely has been for me. So the question that came in this week was, can you speak on how much your thoughts create your reality? And in the context of this question, it said, it seems like you practice this, maybe knowing it or not knowing it, but let me tell you a little secret. This has been one of the concepts that I think has fully changed my life and is the reason why I even was able to start Simply Real Health. But let's start at the beginning because for many of you, I'm sure you have never thought about the concept of your thoughts. They just happen. They're just constantly running so much to the point where most people are not even aware that that stream of thought is always going through their mind. It's just so normal. It's like that person living upstairs and it's been there your whole life. And so you really can't distinguish between your thoughts and that voice in your head that is usually always steeped in fear or worst case scenario. We all have that. All of us, our brains are naturally wired to be looking for things that we need to be protected from. And that's just an evolutionary thing. That's how we have been created. And I think for a good purpose back in the day, but now our lives look so very different. So if this concept is new to you, I just want you to think about this. What I'm talking about is starting to become aware of the thoughts in your head. It's like that automatic programming. It's these talk tracks. It's these limiting beliefs. It's the stories that you're telling yourself and starting to actually become aware of what those are can be very shocking at first and very disturbing. You're like, do I actually think that? Why is that going on in my brain right now? So many of us would never want to admit the things that we say to ourselves in our head. We would never say that to anybody else that we love in our life because it's mean or it's fear-based or cutting. This is how we talk to ourselves. It's crazy. So there's that internal talk track, things that are constantly spinning around in your brain at all hours of the day. It's your subconscious mind. And then there are your reactions to things. Let's say something happens in real life or you're stuck in a traffic jam or something doesn't go the right way for you at work or something happens that's completely different than what you're anticipating and all of a sudden that becomes this trigger for this cascade of other thoughts of, oh, this always happens to me. Of course this is happening. I'm stuck here. I'm so frustrated and I'm so mad. It's that immediate trigger of emotional explosion one way or another or beating down on yourself, that type of thing. Those thoughts, when they happen a lot in your life, becoming aware that they're happening and what those thoughts are saying to you can be the first step of what's going on up there and starting to separate yourself from your thoughts. Your thoughts are just thoughts. Like your brain is crazy, people. It is crazy. You cannot believe every thought that you think. And so starting first to have that slight separation of not every thought that I think is true Not every thought I think, should I be believing? Because it's not. And a lot of times if you do, and if that programming is running in the background all the time, your life will look very different and oftentimes leads to a much more victim mentality, shall I say, of things are happening to you versus things are happening for you, which is a very entirely different way to live. So first, Even just trying to notice where your mind goes. It may be easiest to first do this when there is some trigger or event or you're stuck in traffic or things don't go your way and notice what the thoughts are in your head. Notice if there's an instinct, emotional reaction or a gut response. Notice where your brain goes. Does it go towards anger? Does it go towards disparaging thoughts on yourself? Does it go to blaming yourself? Does it go to guilt? There's so many places that it could go. But then starting to notice what some of those patterns are, because you will start to notice that there are certain ones that come up more often than not, where your brain is just on this running train and if something sets it off, it is so far down the track, you can't even see it. Because once you can start to notice some of those patterns, it becomes so much easier to start to deconstruct 
what's really going on. Because like I said, if you are not allowing this idea that you're believing every thought that you think, and you can separate that your thoughts are different from your heart, different from you, your brain is there as a protective mechanism, but it's not always speaking truth. And so a lot of times we need to check that. We need to have filters and ways to actually check, is that actually true? Is that real? Or is that something I'm making up based on a past experience, based on some beliefs, limiting beliefs most often, based on fear? Our brains make us think that it's real. And so learning that distinction between, is that actually 100% true? Is that a fact? Is that what everybody would say? Or am I just making that up? Am I just making up a story around that? Am I making it mean something that maybe it doesn't? So being aware of your thoughts then gives you this insider glimpse of what you really are telling yourself. And it gives you the chance and the option to audit that and think, I'm going to reach for a higher or different thought here. And this starts so small. This starts in just one tiny daily instance of maybe you're having, I don't know why this is coming to my mind, but like car trouble, you get a flat tire. And instead of being, oh my gosh, of course, this day is going horrible and here's all the things that are going wrong, you could say, that's a thought, right? Those are thoughts. I I specifically remember having this thought when I was in my early 20s, when I was first starting to learn about this connection between our thoughts having so much power over our life and over our daily experience. So it was like an immediate thought. I had no control over it. It just popped into my head. And of course, that starts the wheels going and then everything gets all jumbled in my head and I'm feeling all these feelings about it and it's taking me to this other place. And I remember thinking, okay, wait a second. That's not the thought that I want to continue to run my day. This is not the vibe I want to have. How do I actually change that? And so I remember sitting there in the car thinking, okay, how could I reach for a better thought? What would be A different way to think about this versus that immediate instinctual reaction that we all have. So then I was like, okay, how could I be thinking about this differently? And you know what I thought of? I'm like, well, maybe you don't know. Maybe there's a reason why I'm stuck here right now because who knows? I don't, maybe I would have gotten in an accident had I been there. Maybe there's some sort of reason. Maybe this is a sign from above that's saying, chill out. You know, you're so stressed out. You're so on edge. Why is your schedule so packed tightly to begin with that this is the most stressful thing to happen? You know, it's like reaching for a better thought. Okay, could this be happening for a reason? Could I be trusting in the process of this? Trusting in this lesson that I need to learn right now more so than me needing to get to the next place on time. And so there are a million different moments like that in our day where We just have these instinctual automatic thoughts that usually we've let run the show, but that when you're actually able to slow down just even slightly to think, what was that? (laughs) What was that conversation just in my head? Why was that the first thing that I thought of? You know, and instead of letting that train take off, you're starting to just slow it down, say, okay, what's here? Is there any different direction I want to take this train? Is there, is there any other possibility here? And it really makes you reach, right? It really stretches your brain. But then what happens is that over time, your brain naturally reaches for those higher thoughts without you having to stop and struggle and think and get frustrated with yourself that over time, and I'm talking like years here, that you begin to retrain the workings of your brain. You retrain your perspective. You're able to retrain your mindset. It is so fascinating, the study of neuroscience, literally how our brains are wired and how they fire are based on previous ways they've been wired previous things that have happened, and it makes this neural pathway in your brain. So in order to make new neural pathways, to train your brain to be more positive, to be looking for things that are, oh, this is happening for me, that mindset of going through your life like that versus the way that maybe we all are naturally wired, fear, panic, anxiety, low level thoughts, limiting beliefs all over the place, 
that stop you before you even start doing something. I think the coolest part here is that we have a choice. We have actually a lot more say in the way that our brains are wired if you want to get there, if you want to be living like that, where things feel a little bit easier, where you feel a little bit more at peace and in the flow and not everything is so anxiety producing or stressful or you're running through your day and you're on this hamster wheel and you can't get off. Because those thoughts, I think without being edited, really go in the negative direction. And that's just our instinct. It's not that anything is wrong. That's naturally how we're wired. So this tiny idea is truly something that has changed my life. Slowing down and starting to pay attention of what is going on up there. And getting curious, not being judgmental, just being curious. Like, huh, that's interesting. (laughs) You know, where does that come from? Where did that belief even form? And oftentimes you can probably point back or think back to a certain memory or specific situation where something happened and it didn't go the way that you wanted. And therefore it becomes this hardwiring in your brain of I can't do that. I'm not worthy of that. I'm not brave enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not worth that. And that can take over your life. I mean, that becomes your repeating story and your mantra in your head versus something that is putting you back in the seat of power in your own life. You in the driver's seat. You get to filter. You get to refine. You can reach for better thoughts. When your thoughts are coming from a higher vibe place, your emotions follow, which impacts everything else. (laughs) Because how you feel dictates what we do, what we eat, how we take care of ourselves, the things that we surround ourselves with, what we're doing in our daily life. So it's all connected in that way. And I think this one thing, it's something that's so small, relatively speaking. You don't even have to tell anybody else that you're doing this. But doing this, if you just were willing to be unjudgmental to yourself and just listen and be an observer as best you can into your own thoughts can absolutely change your life. Think about doing that just for a year of your life and where you would be at the end of that year if you were able to more clearly vet, more clearly edit, more clearly filter what's actually going on, which then changes your emotional state, which then changes your mental state, which then changes your physical state. It's amazing. It truly is. If this sounds interesting, I would invite you to try it. There's no harm in doing so. This is stuff that can be done in your own head. You don't even need to say it out loud. But I will say even the practice of journaling or writing stuff out really makes you come face to face with, do I actually think that? Is that actually how I'm talking to myself? It makes you get real. What is going on? Where did that come from? Is that how I want to choose to believe? Is that the story I want to tell myself? And the power of that can change your life. I hope that this was helpful or encouraging or just gave you a little tiny idea of something to try and practice and see where it takes you. I know that for me, this has been life-changing. It has been over the span of decades, but I know and believe that if this was not a practice that I started to think about and try and experiment with, In my mid-20s, I would be in a very, very different place than I am right now. And it's not to say that it's perfect. And I have to do this all the time, every day. Every day. I have to be like, what was that? (laughs) What is that? You know, and get honest. And right now, it becomes almost funny where I'm like, that was weird. Because it's so clear and apparent when something like that comes in that's different than my now new normal way of operating and new normal way of thinking. It's almost comical. Or I get excited so I'm like, ooh, this is showing me something that I clearly could put a little bit more time into. Like I could, I could uncover some things here that will help like ultimately release me. So if you try this, let me know. As with everything, and if you have questions about this or if you do try it, come over and find me at Simply Real Health on Instagram and let me know how it goes. I love you so much and we'll see you back here next week.